Hello everybody, Nathan Forrest here, reviewing Supernatural's third episode of Season 9. Sorry about the late review, but I have been feeling rather unwell as of late. Still better than Castiel, though. Poor bastard has hit some rather hard times. He's homeless, starving, and the unfortunate soul is just getting used to bowel movements and urinating. I love the quote where he says to a fellow homeless man, Do you ever tire of urinating? I'll never get used to it. No, Castiel, neither have I. It's true. I've never gotten used to bowel movements or urinating. It's just so damn inconvenient and gross. He and I see eye to eye on this issue. In the beginning of the episode, we see an angel by the name of Bartholomew gathering together his brethren from heaven and implanting them in willing hosts. The means of advertisement? Televangelist. Seems appropriate. Televangelists are some of the worst people imaginable. Of course, the tyrannical angels in Supernatural would turn to such loathsome individuals. A young girl steps forward to become a host, and she explodes all over the place. Now, you see, to me, this would be a major warning sign. How cavalier the angel was concerning her death, too, would concern me personally, but not the psychotic, narcissistic televangelist scum. Oh no, he accepts it with haste as a sacrifice. This is one of the reasons why I am personally an atheist. There are far too many crazies out there that cause horrors in the name of their religion. When we see Castiel, he is under a bridge, homeless, destitute, starving. He has been given what looks to be a can of beans from a fellow down and outer. They talk for a while, and Castiel makes a humorous, innocent remark about how eating, sleeping, and passing gas are oddities to him. I chuckled at this. He never thinks about how odd he must seem to the average human. He is just Castiel, innocent, crazy Castiel. He walks away to go to sleep, but an angel follows him into a derelict bus, attacks him, only to be skewered by a badass Castiel with an angel blade. Next, we see him on the street. He has some money in his hand, and I am assuming it is the very last vestiges of whatever he received from the guy that almost hit him last episode. He is really hungry, passes a hot dog stand out on the road, but must keep going. He cannot afford the hot dog, not now. He must ward himself against further angel attack, and so he walks into a tattoo parlor to do just that. The next scene is the new big bad Bartholomew talking to a couple of his angel flunkies. They hear about how Castiel killed the agent after him, and they are not at all pleased. I find it humorous that the big bad angel, Bart, looks like a Wall Street stock trader. Making him look like a sociopathic businessman just makes me giggle. And yes, I said giggle. Men can giggle. Castiel goes into a church. Now, I think the writers meant for this scene to be touching, a scene where we see a true believer's faith at work, innocent, pure. But pure of what, I ask? Bullshit. That's what. Pure bullshit. This woman is hurt and desperate, and so of course she turns to some invisible sky daddy to ask for help, even faced with the truth, not just Castiel's subjective truth, but the actual truth of what has happened. She unknowingly turns her back on it and walks out. This reminded me of a study done by some researchers at a university I forget the name of, sorry. The conclusion was that human beings are inherently irrational beings. We are not logical. If our philosophy or outlook of life is threatened by a fact, most often than not, we turn our backs on the truth in favor of a pleasant fantasy. We do this to protect ourselves from heartache and save ourselves from something other, alien, and different. Historically, we have banded together in groups, and the will of the group was good for the individual. Many religions still operate in the same way. The collective interest is protected by any means necessary because, in turn, it helps the individual. In short, people don't care about facts. It's a scary thing to think about, but I am getting off topic here. Castiel knows the truth, and she heard it unwittingly, and cast it out of the realm of possibilities. I don't call this touching. I think it is sad and tragic. There are a couple of Reapers in this episode. One is sent after the Winchesters by Bartholomew, and the other is after Castiel. The one after Castiel is in a beautiful young girl that Kaz falls for. She helps him out, invites him back to her place, and they make love. It isn't until the angel on Reaper sex is concluded that she betrays him, revealing herself as a Reaper. Poor Kaz, man. He can't even get laid right. I feel sorry for the guy. His love life is almost as tragic as mine. It doesn't take Dean and Sam long to apprehend and eliminate the Reaper sent after them by Bart the Angel. They get a lead and begin to hunt for Castiel, and they find him just in the nick of 
Nope, too late. The female reaper that gave herself to our good buddy, Castiel, stabbed him in the abdomen, killing him. The Winchesters fight and eventually kill the reaper, but Castiel is dead, slumped over on the chair he was killed in. Of course, the writers couldn't get rid of Castiel so easily, and so Ezekiel takes over Sam's body, walks over, and heals Kaz, essentially resurrecting him. How, you ask? Does Dean explain this to Sam and Castiel? He tells them a rather humorous story about how he convinced the Reaper to bring Kaz back from the dead in return for her life. Then, like a complete douchebag, he killed her anyway. The music plays, the friends smile, and they go off to their fortress together. The ending of this episode is actually quite haunting and sad. Castiel is glad to be back with the Winchesters after his trials of starvation and homelessness. Unfortunately, Ezekiel, for some unknown reason, doesn't want him around. Oh, sure, he'll save his life, but he doesn't want the poor guy near him. The episode ends with Dean telling Castiel that he must leave, and he looks at Dean shocked, speechless. All in all, it was a fantastic episode. It was so much better than the last episode. I usually love Castiel episodes, and so I am really glad that he survived this time around and didn't die permanently. The one thing that I noticed, though, is that Crowley was completely forgotten this whole episode. And now that I come to think about it, so was Kevin Tran. I wonder what part of the fortress they are hiding in. Anyway, I'll see you next week with another review for Supernatural. Please like and share this review, and as always, thank you for watching.